What's up guys, it's your boy, um, and I'm back again with the video, except today I'm not going to be opening up Pokemon cards. I'm kind of tired of that, I spent a whole week last week, if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out on the YouTube channel. Um, I opened up Rebel Clash, the new Pokemon set, all week, called it Rebel Clash week, I just went off. But this week I kind of want to do something a little bit different, kind of want to uh, focus on something that I've been wanting to focus on for a while, and that's actually my art. Um, so I'm going to make an art video today, and for today's video, if you already checked the thumbnail, you probably already know, I'm going to be drawing a Pokemon. And I'm going to be doing a Pokemon at random. Um, I actually got this uh, random generator online. You guys can probably Google search it and find it. Um, I'm using Steph's phone, my girlfriend's phone, um, to generate a random Pokemon. Um, but before I do, I just want to let you guys know, if you guys want to see more content like this of me drawing, of me uh, coming up with different stuff, like be sure to sound off down below in the comments. Be sure to like the video and of course, be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to hit that 100 subscriber mark, it's going to happen eventually. If you want to just make it happen sooner than later, awesome. So go hit that subscribe button. Uh, so without further ado, um, let's get the drum rolls hitting and let's just go ahead and generate some random Pokemon. Um, over here on the random generator. So I'm gonna go ahead and gen generate some random Pokemon here um, And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually going to draw these uh, Pokemon This Pokemon particular whatever whichever one I generate um, I'm gonna draw it in my own style So I'm not just gonna draw it like the regular how it looks on Pokemon You've already seen what if you've seen my channel you've seen one of my videos of me doing this but this time I'm gonna do it again, just cause I had fun doing it the first time. But I also learned some things of how to do it, so I'm gonna do it a little bit different this time. So we're just gonna go ahead and generate the Pokemon. I think I'm speaking way too loud. So let's go ahead and, um, and start this generating. And let's go ahead and generate the Pokemon. Drum roll again, I'm sorry. And let's go ahead and see which Pokemon I end up getting. And Mighty Mo, catch a tiger by the toe, the bee hollers, let him go, and we got Bunnery, Bunnery, we got Bunnery for our Pokemon, so I'm going to go ahead and set it, set everything up, you guys are going to catch me um, talking about um, the Pokemon drawing while I draw it, so um, stay tuned, do not shut off your whatever you're watching this on, let's go ahead and get started with the drawing. What's up guys? So here we are. I'm going to be speaking to you guys about the drawing. So um, to start off the drawing, I pretty much just wanted to get the base form of the Pokemon. Um, this Pokemon is not really that sort of complex as far as design is concerned. So I didn't really have much that I could change. So that made it actually surprisingly more difficult. You would think it would actually make it a little bit easier to do, but it actually made it harder. Um, so the face, I kept it kind of similar. Um, design wise didn't really change much except for the mouth of course you could see has a little bit more of a bunny mouth than the original mouth of the Pokemon um, I kept that ear um, to both ears I know there's like one ear that's like rounded up I kept them both high but obviously I erased it um, I think I like just how it looks better um, I do mess around a lot with the eyes um, it's just I don't know why for some weird reason it's like difficult to get the eyes correct but it just is um i think uh, uh one of the things when i'm drawing is um i never sort of settle even with like a simple design like this like for example like that arm that's sticking out um the her the baneri's right arm like there was just like three different positions that i ended up changing it at and i just never really was satisfied with either or um, and right here, I actually get <laughs> make it have a little tutu, um, and I make it have like a suit. But obviously, that looks really weird to put on a Pokemon. So I just wanted to make it seem different than the original, because um, obviously, I'm supposed to be doing this in my own style. So I didn't really want to just copy exactly what the original Pokemon was. I wanted to give it my own little flair. So instead of giving it like a lower half that's just a big poofiness i kind of want to make it look like a tutu obviously i'm not going to give it like an actual like um uh what you call it clothing um but i just made the fluffiness look like it was like a tutu um and i just thought it kind of added to it it made it look a little bit interesting if you also notice um the head 
of Baneri is a little bit different where as the original Pokemon, it's very one shaped. Um, and this one, I added a little bit of a cheekiness and then I made the head sort of, it has a little bit more of a form to it than the original. Um, whether that's good or bad, I think that's subjective. Um, I just know that I like to draw my uh, Pokemon like that. Right there, I flipped um, the image only because I like to see it upside down. Pro tip is um, sometimes you can tell like an anatomical uh, things about your drawing when you put it upside down. You might be like, oh, that leg is off or oh, that arm is off or oh, that head is way positioned badly. And so it's an easy way to sort of tell um, whether something is off or not. And so that's usually why I do that. I flip it upside down. I usually like if I have a light, I uh, um, flip the paper and I look at it, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, uh, uh, reversed just to see if there's any thing wrong with the photo itself um but before i get into like inking i want to make sure all of this line work is correct and now we're going straight into inking bro okay so <laughs> um with the inking i do use favor castells and also microns as you just saw right there i threw the favor castell down first and then the micron right there i tested out the micron and the favor castell to make sure that the thickness and the consistency of the line work um was exactly what i wanted and as you can see i started out with just the micron um i thought i was gonna go with the favor castell but it just didn't produce the um line consistency that i needed for this image it was gonna be a little too thick so i went with the micron instead because i it, it became a little bit more flexible to use obviously you can see i changed one eye to make it wink instead of having both eyes open it just there was something visually wrong um, now in the inking process though one thing to keep in mind as you're watching me do this is if you notice that ear I inked it differently than what I had had it drawn and sketched out the only reason why I did that is because sometimes I like to look at the image after I it's all sketched out and whatnot and I like to see little things that I could change when I ink it um, it's not nothing terribly major because all the hard work should be already done with the line work um, and the inking is just going over with the whatever um, depth you want to add to the to the actual inks uh, but I did change that ear um, not much else I did change other than add a little bit more thickness here and there that I sort of didn't illustrate with the line work of the pencils um, right here I erase every pencil mark that is underneath the inking that should not be showing um, this like lets me like have a better visual of where I should go over and again I got a, a lighter micron there as you see me throw it down um, for these little details over here I noticed that Boneri has these sort of details that are very lighter um, while her outside line work is a lot thicker um, those things like under the paws and um, her like eyebrow-esque I don't know if they're eyebrows whatever you want to call them but uh, I know that the line work is a lot thinner there so I got a thinner micron for that. Um, everything else is pretty much just standard illustrating. Write down, put down my um, my uh, signature, and there we go. Off to coloring, bro. So uh, for the coloring, if um, I could have done all of this digitally, but the coloring I just like to do digitally, um, only because right now my Copics, I don't know if I have every single color that I need. Also, um, um, I figured a way of making these sort of digitally enhanced um i have the original baneri there for the coloring layout to know what should be light dark and the base tone and whatnot um just because i don't really want to change the color of it um the only thing that did change um of it was the shape form and sort of look and feel of baneri is different is in my own version but the colors, I like the colors of Baneri, so I don't really want to change it. Uh, maybe I should have gone with the shiny version. Um, after looking at it, the image actually, uh, and I saw the shiny version of Baneri, it was actually kind of fire. It was actually a little heat. Uh, the shiny version actually don't look bad. So maybe, maybe I made a mistake there. Maybe I could make a shiny version. Um, I could go back and change the colors. Who knows? Um, but here I, I do everything on using my mouse. Um, I have a tablet, but it doesn't really work as well as I sort of want to. It doesn't really go. It's 
it's still a work in progress for me to sort of get everything down. I'm just so used to doing it with my, um, with my, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, mouse that I just, I just do it with my mouse. So, uh, right here, I just keep chunking away with my mouse, um, adding definition there by adding the shades and then I go back in, insert it all there. And then, um, yeah constantly using the binary as a sort of reference this one was actually i mean if you see if you guys see my mega agron um drawing i didn't show a time lapse video um of the coloring process i kind of just shot everything uncut and raw and i didn't really edit it and speed it up and whatnot um, but here i wanted to speed it up and only because i found a screen recorder on my laptop to record the screen um i don't know if it did 100 percent as well as i expected because the frame rate is pretty low for what i'm used to and um it goes a little bit slower than what i'm used to as well so it, it the quality may not seem as good um in the final product here as you're seeing it but you know i got it screen recorded and i guess that's all that matters and uh so you're watching me right now now i'm adding a little bit now the one thing that's interesting about these pokemon is um, the one thing that gives them sort of de definition is not just the colors, but um, the sort of texture that the colors give. So like they have this sort of texture um, about them when you start shading it that makes it sort of like pop out a little bit. And that's one interesting one there. If you see the original Baneri, it has a lot of shading effects that make it seem like it's like a... Um, a cr oil or acrylic is like painter-esque feel and so that's one thing that i'm gonna go back in after i add in all the base colors and sort of add that texture in which um with a brush which um is a cartoon brush that i use on photoshop uh, which adds a little bit of a texture here that i like um it sort of almost closely mimics what uh the artist used for the pokemon it's not exactly um, exactly correct correct to a T but you know it it gets it gets the job done <laughs> you know what I mean it, it does close and it, it adds a little bit extra texture to where it, um, for example the mega agron if you go to that video I didn't add that much of this texture to it only because I felt like the Pokemon didn't need it but because Baneri is a bunny and because a lot of this is fur I felt like you know I needed to add that texture there in order to convey the depth of the fur and sort of make the cuteness of it also pop out i just felt like if i didn't do it it was gonna look a little too flat and honestly i was satisfied with it and i'm kind of glad that i did and didn't just leave it flat so that's pretty much baneri right there um i don't think i add anything right here i just add a backdrop um, of a little pink bubble right there to fit with the pokemon and boom there you go um, there's Baneri for you and actually uh, prints are available for all these Pokemon that I do draw if you go to the link in the bio of this video um, you will see a link or if you go to the bio of this video you will see a link click on that link and you can get an art print for these Pokemon of my own very style um, if not it is what it is as long as you share the link that would be awesome just so people could see it and people could uh, be like i like this i don't like this i don't know leave your opinion down below um if you guys did like the video of course i would love to hear your comments um i would love if you guys like the video to actually like it like physically like press that like button yo it helps um and obviously if this is your first time watching this video or um any video for that matter please subscribe um that means a lot as well and go ahead and share the video if you will if or if you may if not it is what it is but uh yeah there you guys go Baneri in my style um hopefully i can do more pokemon videos for you guys in the future um we shall see um but yeah until the next video guys have an awesome one